Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here based on one of your newer suggestions. This one has to do with an entry that is so fascinating only because it's a cryptid that has been long reported at a particular location on this earth, then it became a part of a play and like somebody actually placed this cryptid within a musical and when that happened advertisers in turn took this cryptid and placed it within their own marketing I mean it's just so crazy you would never think something like this would happen today but it did back in the early 20th century and it has to do with this you're looking at it now it goes by several different names but this cryptid the most popular name is known as the Gazeka. So let's go ahead, let's talk about all the fascinating, weirder than true life information associated with this cryptid. So what is this Gazeka? Well, it goes by several different names. Um, it's also known as the Papuan Devil Pig, and then in other places it's called Moncton's Gazeka, I guess based on who created it or who first saw it. In either case, the most common name is the Gazeka, and it happens to be a very large animal animal or cryptid that is found in Papua New Guinea. The first known sighting somewhere around there has been uh, was in the early 20th century. No known exact time period like in terms of the year but somewhere along those lines that's when uh, people started to see it. I guess it had to do more on the lines of expeditions going out there in Papua New Guinea and when that happened that's when these explorers came across this thing. Now the way it's described as looking as is this. In the simplest terms think of it as a as a giant sloth or giant tapir, uh, just basically supersized, much larger than your average human, dwarfing them. In fact, probably almost the size of an elephant. And its most prominent uh, feature happens to be like a gigantic snout, something that is just overlapping its entire mouth. But for otherwise, other intents and purposes, it looks more on the lines of a giant sloth. And it can be reported as being. Uh, uh, something that's just pretty much tepid like it's it's uh, not necessarily violent not necessarily something you should have any signs of danger from but in some of its depictions afterward in order it seems like in order to help sell magazines and to help sell publications um, it's been depicted as going from that to the very extreme side like openly attacking people and then trying to create havoc upon the explorers although there are no notable instances again of anybody being attacked by this gazeka and I kind of believe that more along that lines because this thing it just seems like the kind of animal or cryptid that would just be living its life quietly within certain parts of the forest of Papua New Guinea it wouldn't necessarily come out and then try to attack or hunt or use or people as prey but that's it as far as its characteristics um, the the first explorer the one that uh, that found it was a guy by the name of K.A.W. Moncton, he was someone that traveled westward there to bring it to Papua New Guinea, and that's when he first saw what was known as these giant footprints, something that he claimed was from a monster that had these cloven hooves. And then the way it was described was there in the grassy plains around the lakes, that's where this location of this monster was, very high up there. It would have to be about 3,800 meters to be exact in terms of its location. Maybe this is why it has lived so long there in fact it's been surmised that it could be uh, uh, something coming from a long lost mammal so, uh, that was something by the name of the oh this is a tough one pelor chest today just is essentially a creature that lived a long time back like uh, so much uh, like it's pretty much extinct to this day but this thing this gazeka may be a descendant of it and that way it essentially uh, has lived in quiet peace there in Papua New Guinea if but for every now and then a little bit of explorers coming across it a uh, success is this location because yes there have been other expeditions to try to purposely find this creature there was a expedition in 1909 that was led by a William Goodfellow 
but when he went up there, he wasn't able to find it. It's just too high. It's too extreme. There was another attempt by a Dr. Lawrence a couple years later. Um, when he tried to go up there, he also was not successful. But in his case, there was some tragedies because uh, he, he himself fell off a cliff, broke his rib, in, the, uh, in fact, from the, from the fall. And then three of the people within his group also ended up uh, 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 being severely damaged. In this case, three of them died died because they froze to death because of the very very high altitude so whatever this creature does it has found a perfect environment to stay hidden from no doubt its giant uh, uh, fur coat it's its large fat that it has surrounding its body it just simply lives there in peace and then that way it can stay up there but every now and then of course some people run across it too now as far as the advertising here's how things go so somewhere along the way I guess these stories of the Gazeka reached someone, a guy by the name of George Graves, who introduced the notion of a Gazeka in a play. It's a musical of his that he called The Little Micas. This was back in 1905. And the way it was described was this, it was almost like a tongue-in-cheek type thing. He stated that this creature was more than the lines discovered, quote-unquote discovered, by an explorer who was traveling with a large case of whiskey. Implying, of course, that this traveler drank a lot of the whiskey and then that in turn made him see things that that maybe weren't there. In fact, the way it was described was the Gazeka was first discovered by an explorer who was accompanied in his travels by a case of whiskey and who half thought he had seen it before in a sort of dream. Either way, though, this Gazeka and this play within it, it became very popular, so much so that there was a, a competition done to try to have an actual depiction of the Gazeka created by artists. So during the play, it looks like the, nobody like uh, did anything in terms of creating an interpretation of the Gazeka, uh, probably for budget reasons, whatever is the case. But later on, uh, this guy Graves, he encouraged artists, local artists, and, and told them, let's see if you can come up with sketches of what you think this beast will look like from my play. And so a guy won the sketch, guy by the name of Charles Folkard. He won the competition. And when that happened, uh, the Gazeka took on a life of its own. Um, in fact, it was uh, something that was featured in jewelry. It was featured in charms. The company of, of, of sparkling waters, known as Perrier, even created several advertisements from it. You're looking at it now. Isn't it kind of creepy looking, isn't it? You know, to think that there was this cryptid basically selling Perrier sparkling water. And then also later on that same year during the Christmas holidays this thing almost became like its own little talking Elmo because it became a very popular present for children children were actually asking for a Gazeka they called it the unique toy of the season and then finally it was introduced in some other show in terms of a special called Akazag which was somewhere on the London Hippodrome which is amazing I mean the, the, to imagine this Gazeka living just there somewhere somewhere in Papua New Guinea, then explorers find it, then that discovery gets placed into a musical play, then that character of the Gazeka becomes so popular, there's a competition, and then advertisers start using that look in its, in its thing, and then there's all these little trinkets being formed from it, it's just crazy, like truth is stranger than fiction, amazing how this stuff takes on a life of its own, but yes, for a little bit, I think this is the first time, other than like, obviously like big foots and Loch Ness monsters that have so much so much merchandise tied to them this is the first time that I can think of though that someone else outside of these all-stars had its own line of merchandise amazing amazing stuff but that's it that's pretty much all the information tied to this unique creature if it's still out there it's somewhere there in Papua New Guinea if you have a chance to go there and you want to brave the uh, very high expeditions then you can do so and when you see those notable large uh, tracks that this creature leaves, then you'll know you'll be in the vicinity of the Gazeka. If anyone has any more information, anything else you might have missed, please post those comments below. Share them for everyone. It would be great to hear what you think about this unique advertising and marketing cryptid. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care.